<clears throat> the following interview was conducted with Patrick Hart, president of the Reamer Club 2011 for the Free University of Oral History program, took place on Tuesday, May 31st, 2011 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Patrick, welcome and thank you very much. Let's start out, tell us about where you were, where and when you were born and your parents and early years. Uh, I was born in Columbus, Ohio in 1989. I uh, lived there for two years and then moved to Boulder, Colorado where I grew up until okay. through high school and then coming out here. I went to high school at Fairview High School in Boulder. Uh, I was part of their international baccalaureate program. What sort of program is that? Uh, it's an international high school degree kind of thing where you take um, similar to AP tests, but it's a world standard. So there are IB schools not only across the country, but across the world, and their curriculum is a st set curriculum. Uh, I graduated with that diploma and my high school diploma in 2007, and then came, came here in the fall of 07. Okay, how'd you have to select? And back in high school, were there any student clubs or organizations or anything um, that you Actually, to? I was the, I was involved with the Junior Classical League, and I was the state vice president my senior year of high school. So um, I went to the National Convention for class, Junior Classical League, and then I ran our state, um, our state meeting as the state vice president. Very good. Good experience for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how'd you happen to select Purdue? Did, um, you, did you come for Boiler Gold had, Rush, too? Yeah. Okay. We had uh, college rep visits a lot of my junior year, and one of them was Purdue, and it sounded interesting, and I looked into it more, and I knew I wanted to do engineering, and I wanted a top engineering school, so I applied, and just, you know, there it sounded the best to me, and, you know, it's actually been probably the best decision. Good. And you came for Boiler Gold Rush? Yeah, I was here for did that. Did you visit, be did you come for day on campus or? I did day on campus only after I had been accepted. I oh, didn't okay. visit before I got accepted. Sure. But okay. I came for a day on campus and then VGR and got myself acquainted with campus and everything. Okay, tell us about some of the other clubs and, and where did you live when you first came here? Uh, my first two years I spent in Hilltop Apartments and then I moved to First Street Towers my junior year, and now I live off campus. How'd you like First Street? That's brand new. It was that really, his first year? Yeah, it was okay. really nice. It was, it was very fancy. A lot different than the other ones, right? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> um, I'm also involved with the Purdue Formula SAE team, which builds an open wheel race car every year and races it in competition in Michigan every May. And I've been involved with them since I was a freshman and that's you been like really that. helpful and it's a lot of just hands-on experience with engineering which is kind of what I want to get into so good it's a good good experience in yeah okay let's talk a little about the reamer uh, tele researchers and then some of the things go ahead okay uh, well I pledged the reamer club in the spring of 2008 the club has an eight-week pledging process where they decide on pledges from a group of prospective members and then you are put through an eight-week pledging process where you learn the traditions, the songs of the university, the traditions of the club. Um, you get to know all the active members and they get to know you. You get to meet influential honor people on campus who are honorees of the club, such as Danny Hope, Morgan Burke, Matt Painter, um, Martin Jiski, Patty Jiski, Roy Johnson, people like that and get to know what they do around campus and everything. And then after you complete pledging, you, uh, you become a co-pilot of the Boilermaker Special. So every person in the club can co-pilot the, bo the Boilermaker Special or the train. Um, from there, every fall we do home, uh, we take the train to every football game, home and away. So uh, there's, you get, Usually you get to go on one away trip every fall, and you get the crew leaves Friday afternoon, Friday night. You go up, stay in the hotel, watch the train the next morning. You get to see half the game, and then you bring the train back that evening. Um, and then for home crews, we do we do wake ups at eight o'clock, getting everybody excited, and then we're part of the uh, band parade two Slater, and then from Slater up around at the top of the stadium and then down and into the stadium and we stand on the field 
and we um, the reamers You're actually over hold in the, the far flags. Section, aren't you over near whereabouts? We're next. The train sits next to the south end zone, and then the reamers have a sec a section of seats right behind the the opposing bench, so that they can go down and hold the American and the state flags during the band pregame. Um, That's nice. Yeah. What about the sm the, the, the small one now? The researchers. There's two. Yeah, the okay. small train leads the leads the band parade from to Slater and then from Slater into the stadium, and then it leads the team out onto the field when they're in the stadium, and then it's also at all the volleyball games and usually hopefully all the men's ba men's basketball games that it can go to, uh, since it fits inside of Mackey and the IAF and everything. Right. Um, how, far, how fa uh, fast does that go? 60, can it go 65? The big train can go 65 miles an hour on the highway. Um, its only limiting, limiting factor is drag, basically, and the fact that, you know, it's an extremely heavy vehicle and it's trying to push its way up the hills. Um, the extra can go about 10 to 15 miles an hour. It's an ele it's a golf cart electric oh, chassis, it? so. Okay. It looks great on the field. <laughs> it, it does look great, and it's a lot more fun, and anybody in the, um, anybody in the club can become a pilot of that with only three hours of training. The okay. training process for the big train is about 40 to 50 hours behind the wheel without anybody in it, so it's a lot more extensive process, and not as many people can drive the big train. Right, okay. I'll talk about your presidency. Um, the Rima Club has a new president every semester. Uh, I've carried over my presidency from the spring into the summer as well because we need an officer to be able to sign forms to go on trips and everything with the train. Uh, it's a very interesting position. You don't really realize how tough it is to be standing at the front of the room, you know, putting Robert's rules of, rules of order into use until you have to sit there and not have an opinion on anything. Um, it's definitely an interesting semester. This past semester, we had a lot of changes that we were trying to make and a lot of tougher discussions that it was very tough to sit at the front of the room and be very opinionated on and not be able to show it. Um, but it's That's management, right? Decision making. Yeah. Being, being the impartial person at the front of the room has definitely been an experience. How many officers in the club do you have? We have a core group of eight officers that make up our executive board, and then we have about 15 committee chairs that are non-voting members of the executive board that can attend their meetings but not and give their thoughts and advice but not vote on any of the policy. Okay. And then, um, and th but then only two of our mem two of the officers can sign off on. Um, Official paperwork through Bozo. Let me ask you about that for the researchers. How do you, how do how do you some other events other than, you know, we have regular scheduled ones though, don't you for the sports? I mean, how does that? Yeah, um, the Boilermaker Special is contracted out through our Boilermaker Special chairperson. They handle all the all the requests for time and is it something the student organizations office that handles it or no? We handle it internally. Oh, okay. They're, one of our officers is in charge of that, and they take all the requests from people via email, phone, letters, sure. and they schedule everything out. We don't confirm anything until a month before it, the date of the event. And um, athletics, you know, we plan at being on you know, all the football games. And you and know everything. a little bit in advance on that, don't you? Or we have. Uh, you, we know the football schedule in advance. We don't schedule anything on any Saturday in the fall unless it's our bye week. And then for sometimes we do rides to soccer with the big train, so we'll keep the Friday afternoon schedule open for soccer. But other than that, we it's first come, first serve. If you ask for that date first, your name's at the top of the list for that date. And as long as nothing goes wrong, you get that date. Um, and then we contract that out. and. We do. We make our own. Con we write our own contracts, and the all the money that's made from that goes directly to paying for maintenance and gas and oh, yeah. all the work on the special and also the extra special. And since it takes. What about off camp? Uh, researchers might ask. What about off campus events? Do you do off campus? The events? big train does off campus events. It'll go. 
kind of anywhere you want. Uh, once you get outside of a 30 mile radius of Lafayette, you have to start paying mileage. Okay. But other than that, I know during the summers we do anything from, you know, Evansville to Chicago or, you know, elsewhere in Illinois. Uh, I know it's been, there were several times when it went to Canton, Ohio for the NFL Football Hall of Fame parade where it got contracted to go to there because there were Purdue players there. But, I mean. And also you might mention just the Indy 500. And it goes to the, the Indy 500 parade every year. It goes to the State Fair every year. Purdue Day at the State Fair every year. Um, it appears in that, I guess, parade. I haven't done that yet. But um, with the Indy 500 parade, we go with the band and help them uh, by handing out water and everything to them okay. while they're marching. Did you go, were you in the Macy? Did you go for the Macy parade? No. Oh. We were not in the Macy State Parade. We tried to be, but just didn't seem feasible sure. with football the next day. Yeah, that's, it was a tight tight schedule. Yeah. Because <laughs> they had to be back for it, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, any special programs that, or any things, um, initiatives? That you big, I guess one of the big ticket things is there, we've done, the train is actually in maintenance right now for a major overhaul. It will be, uh, the trains have been numbered since their beginning in 1939 right. with one, two, three, and five, because number four was one of the smaller trains, and number six is also one of the smaller trains. Uh, one was from 1940 to about 1950-ish, two is from about 1950 to the mid-60s, and then three lasted from the 60s until 1993. And then Boiler Maker Special 5, which is the current one, has been from 1993 to this year. But this year, it went in for a major over overhaul of engine chassis and transmission, which were all donated by companies that helped us with the five. And That's very nice. It's at Wabash National right now okay. being, um, being refitted to the new chassis, which designates a number change because the superstructure, while it will appear to be almost exactly the same, is being put on a new chassis, but tradition states that from one to two, that was what happened, and the number changed there, so we have to change the number, so the train will be back as number seven this fall, so there will be a big dedication for that at a football game. Good. We're excited about that. We've got, fingers crossed, our new traditions book will be out in the spring as well. Okay. And That's a nice... Nice book. I have used it a lot. Yeah. It's well we, done. And I've given it as gifts, as a matter of yeah, fact. Yeah, we, uh, we're looking to, um, we've got all the information into the university press right now, so hopefully spring 12, we will be able to have them on the shelves in university bookstores and places like that. I don't like think that. sometimes when I give those as gifts, to be honest with you, people realize the work that goes into that. Because you have a big crew and there's a changeover thing, so it's, and it's, a, it's well done. Yeah. Pictures and everything is well done. And having seen the earlier issues, the one where the pictures and everything was really nice. Yeah, it's, they've done a great job with it. And then we're also working on um, trying to get, um, we're looking at trying to get a, garage, a permanent garage structure for the train. Right now we're in one of the maintenance, the rec sports. We're part of the rec sports garage right now and we're not sure how long that's going to last. So we're looking for we're making a big effort to look for our own independent garage um, land spot that we can build on or have somebody build on sure. for us or attach to some part of the university. Let me ask, let me interrupt. Maintenance, if something happens during the year, does Purdue help? Do, is it done on site, like over the car transportation? Or uh, or maintenance? Some maintenance is done at transportation oh. services. If it's major maintenance, we take it to Weirs and Lafayette. Okay. Um, if it's body work, we take it to Abbott's oh, over in Lafayette. Okay. So. But minor things are something that could be done on campus, could be done here. Oil changes, <laughs> air filter changes, things like that. We just take it over to transportation services because it is technically a university vehicle. Sure. It's got a university vehicle number and everything. Right. Yeah. And you got your license on there too, right? Yeah, yeah. it's got it's it's got the Purdue tags. I'm not yeah. sure if it's going to get new ones now. When you go around, what kind of reaction do you get from people? People... I don't know. Some of the best reactions are when you're driving to football games and the, mean the, the away Purdue, games, or the away games okay. and the uh, Purdue fans will pass you on the highway, you know, yelling out the window, hanging out the window, yelling at you. We get some really strange looks from a lot of people when we're out of state who are like, what is that? 
going down the road. What is it doing, road? you know, going 65 miles an hour down the road, <laughs> especially when you blow the horn at them and they can't figure out what's going on. Careful, Purdue is coming, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. um, look up about leadership, your uh, leader's role in academia and the professional world. I think views. being in leadership definitely helps with, you know, with being able to transition into professional world, being in a leadership position where you have to lead your peers and be in charge of your peers makes it a lot easier to transition into having to lead people who are subordinate to you or are your peers and deal with people in a professional situation because you have to be able to contact even the most influential members of people on campus, as, such as the president, you know, more you know, intercollegiate athletics director, people like that, and have a very professional re relationship with them. Sure. As well as being able to represent, you know, a group of your peers and also to lead them in, you know, a formal meeting right. type of situation. Nicely said. That's very good. And then you've attended some of the, the uh, some leadership, but you're also a member of the president, the yeah. President's Council. Yeah. Um, the president of the Reamer Club is, in the Reamer Club as a whole is invited to President's Roundtable, so our president sits on President's Roundtable, which is a collection of very influential presidents, uh, inf presidents of very influential groups on campus, um, the IFC, Panhellenic Association, PACE, PISA, PSG, um, several other sure. influential clubs. Uh, also, I've been to the Mortar Board Student Leadership Conference and the Student Leaders Retreat, which is put on by SAO, mm -hmm. and those have been a lot of help. Um, they're really great opportunities for you know anybody anybody can go to. Sure, right, and it's, they're they're well they've been put on for some period of time, and they're yeah. they're well done, which yeah. is nice. Good, that's good. How about hobbies, special interests? Uh, I play golf. I've played golf since I was in high school. Okay. I love it. It's You'll be ready for the corporate world. <laughs> Maybe. I huh? haven't golfed as much recently as I like to, but, sure. you know. Uh, also, I'm a big fan of racing and motorsports, so that's why I got, got involved in the Formula SAE team. Why don't you tell researchers what your involvement is with that? Uh, basically, I started with uh, freshman year. I went out to their call out, found out about the team, and within a week I was in the machine shop making blocks and parts on CNC or on mills and lathes to put the car together. By my sophomore year, I had designed an entire section of part of the car, the gas tank, and the entire system to go around that. And uh, you really, it's a really very hands-on experience. You go from a table with nothing on it in August to April when there's a car sitting there and you have to take it out and go test it and see what's wrong and bring it back and adjust it and everything and then to competition where there's a hundred teams from not only across the US but across the world there's teams from Switzerland, Finland, Germany, Lo England who come and compete with everybody and it's a very interesting design series to see you know how all these people solve Kind of the same problem in yeah, but how lots of different ways. It. Yeah, do you do you know, are you involved in Grand Prix at all? Are you Actually, we the Rainbow Club is starting a Grand Prix team, um, restarting I guess because okay. we've had one in the past. Okay, uh, we're starting a Grand Prix team this coming year. We should be racing in the spring. Okay, but uh, had some experience with that. Just it's. It's a lot more basic than a formula car, but it's. Where do you race? Where do the form? Where do you get together for the? Uh, the formula car we test in the large Ross Aid Stadium lot. Um, sometimes, and then we get permission from athletics to block the lot off and do that. And then, the race is actually at Michigan International Speedway. Uh, they don't. Is it held what once a year? Or? Uh, yeah, there are several events, but we just go to the Michigan International one. Okay. And they use part of the track, um, the flat section of the track, to set up different dynamic events. What's what is the award that you get? What um, the winners? Um, what do they get? There's, I'm not sure exactly what the prize is, but the Michigan, the Michigan competition is kind of the world finals. So the best teams from throughout the world and then the U.S. teams that go are competing for 
the best spot, the best design made car in in the world, basically in this competition. Sure, right. Oh, that oh, we got lots of experience. Bro. Yeah. Um, do you have a Purdue tradition? Now that I know the Reamers are a big one. Any other one that comes to mind? Um, I don't know. Just being part of uh, the Rima Club, you really you have to learn so many traditions that you know you start following them, like the Lions Fountain, and you know the story behind the Lions Fountain, and just the story behind a lot of the buildings on campus, and why the Victory Bell is there, and what the tank scrap was, and um, a lot of a lot of members of the Reamer Club still do senior chords. And do so, they go to the games with them? And so the Reamer, uh, the Reamer seniors every semester pretty much will, semester a year will paint up a bunch of their chords and um, they'll wear them when they're on the field with the train, they'll wear, they'll wear them to the game, you know, if they're not with the train and it's really cool to see. Yeah. And uh, some of them even get go all out and have bamboo canes and bowlers. All the like regalia the that they used to wear yeah. with the whole thing, right. Yeah, I've seen pictures so, in the uh, debris. <laughs> yeah, so it, just being, I don't know, being a reamer definitely feels like you are part of the traditions because you're working with the train, you know, you're you're making part of the traditions and, you know, you're... For, you're um, right in the heart of it. Yeah, the reamers do a lot to fundraise and help events on campus. We've donated large sums to the Unfinished Block P, the Ropes Course, the new project that's going in front of the Armory, the Freedom Square project. Um, what else have we done? Oh, we were responsible for restoring the Lions Fountain back in the early 2000s, right. so. It's, you're really involved in the traditions, which means a lot, and the people come back and they can enjoy it, yeah. you know, which is nice. Let me ask you this. What kind of reaction do you get from you have to take some children on the Boilermaker? Do they get a big kick out of it? Some of them absolutely love it, and others are terrified of it. Sometimes, some little kids just do not like the, the big loud horn. Some of them cannot stand it. You'll do birthday parties with the train during uh -huh. the summer, and you know some kids will be like, this is the greatest thing ever, and other kids are crying and wanting to get off because they don't like it. But so it's, you get all kinds of reactions. That's interesting. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun to go do birthday parties or wedding pictures with sure. a train, and those are really fun because you drive all around campus and stop and let people take pictures and I know. everything. I know somebody that took advantage of that, and they really liked it, and they've enjoyed showing the pictures. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have an outstanding event? You may have more than one or anything comes to mind? Um, I guess... As far as the club goes, I don't know, what kind of outstanding it, event? Whatever, sometimes people, well, sometimes the seniors, the uh, faculty retire, they'll say maybe commencement, or they do like football, or sometimes the Boilermaker special, it's a number, or sometimes it's when I met my wife. You know? um, probably just being, all the times where... It doesn't necessarily have to be Peru, it could where, be Where, you know, you're working with the train, and you're in on game day, and you're having to walk with it up to the stadium and you're part of the atmosphere that day and it's really it's awesome to be a part of the atmosphere and you watch everybody who's watching you walk by or whatever and they're like oh man that's that's so cool and you're like yep it's it's really cool i'm i'm part of it it's i i it's with really you. nice and after all I'll, I'll share something uh the next stage post purdue and are you graduating you said uh, in december graduating in december okay um looking for an engineering job and your major Hopefully the state me mechanical, mechanical engineering. Okay. So I'm fingers crossed trying to get something set up where I could get into the motorsports or racing world. Uh, I've had a couple of contacts with the Indy Racing League, okay. got some teams there. So hopefully that'll pull through and I'll be able to do something with that. Okay, we'll keep in touch then. Yeah. <laughs> anything I forgot to ask or anything you'd like to say? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think so much that the club does that it's hard to remember. It's really, there are a lot of things, and it's been going on for a long period of time. How, how about the farthest that, uh, trip that you've taken? You went, it went to the Rose Bowl, didn't it? The train has been to the Rose Bowl twice in 1967 and 19, and or 2000. sorry, 2001. Right. Um, it gets trucked to both of those. It gets put on a big 18-wheeler truck Because there. it's too, you can't drive it. Because it would make it, it, it would take too long, and it can't make it over the mountains oh, are the okay. two things so 
going down through Texas and across I-40 would take extremely long. And they just don't want to spend a week and right. thousands and thousands of miles on the engine doing right. that. Um, this year, its longest trip will be Penn State. Um, two years ago, I went to Minnesota with it. That was that was a long trip. We took off Friday morning and didn't didn't get there till Friday night. And hmm. Didn't realize how far Minnesota actually was from here. Yeah, you think it's closer than it really is. Yeah, you're like, oh no, it's just right. Oh no, it's not right there. Right. <laughs> do you go to some, do you, you talk about an away football game? Do you go to any away basketball games? Um, we the train will go to Final Fours or Elite Eight and Final Four appearances by Purdue. Um, oh, if they're in the final four. Yeah, they the will. final okay. four appearances where they're in the last final location. Um, mm-hmm. Groups of Dreamers have been to several away games, and a large group went to Iowa last year. Um, a lot more of that is just you know individual want to go to an away game and see one of their right. cool stadiums. What about do you have any? Do the alums come? Do, is there any contact with the alums when we, you go to the away game or? At away games, not so much. Every fall, we have a homecoming cookout that we invite all. All our alumni right, too. Right, the one that's on campus then? That's on campus. Um, last fall we brought a group of Reamers from the 60s. The entire decade came back and they had their own weekend planned and they met up with us and talked with us. So there's a lot of, a lot of contact great? back and forth. We still put out an, a semesterly newsletter that goes to all our alumni to let them know what's going on. Great. It's nice to keep in touch. Yeah. yeah. And especially since the club's been going since 1923. So, you got some of the older ones too, and they like to keep in touch. Yeah, they that's, do. That's very important. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. This has yeah. been very nice. I have.